Good morning. I'm Dr. Joyce Van Hook of Oakland, California, and I will be the moderator for this class. Today is Saturday, November 19th, 2022. You have been muted. Please continue to monitor your mute and video buttons during class. Uh, do we need more time here? No, something is... Someone is not muted. Okay. Thank you. Good morning. I am Dr. Joyce Van Hook of Oakland, California, and I will be the moderator for this class. Today is Saturday, November 19th, 2022. You have been muted. Please continue to monitor your mute and video buttons during class. Welcome to this Zoom class given by some students of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. We are a Zoom class of international honest hearted truth seekers of Yahshua the Messiah. This is a school and not a church and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and divine revelation given to the founder Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. The class was incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Classes are held in Canada, the United States, Bahamas, Jamaica, England, Ghana, Zambia, Malaysia, Australia, and certain other foreign countries. The host is Dr. Lenore Allen, of Brooklyn, New York. In this school, we teach the true, correct, and the original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yahweh has been improperly substituted with the title Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. Elohim has been improperly substituted with the title God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. Yahshua has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8, 5, that there are lords and gods many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet, they would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a J in the English alphabet until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and his son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in his pure spirit state, he is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this Moses chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He, Yahweh chose a cloud because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you 
that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, the self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name, Yahshua, and title Elohim may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also, in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called a divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this divine threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this class, we teach the mission of Yahshua the Messiah which was to fulfill the old covenant and to write the new covenant in our heart and mind by the preaching of the gospel. The 10 primary objectives and aims are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures compared to religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern, practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And 10, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is speak the truth. 
we will open this morning's class with a prayer rendered by Dr. Andre Allen of Novato, California. We will have two songs this morning, one by Dr. Deborah Van Hook and the second one followed by Dr. Carlton Gordon. Our scriptures today are Isaiah, the 28th chapter, verses 9 to 13, Hebrews 9 and 1, and then Hebrews 6 to 14. The third will be 1 John 6 to 8 from the King James Version. That will be read by Dr. Jackie McCain of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Our readers for today are Dr. Diderio Warren of Detroit, Michigan, and Dr. Marie Winters of Arkport, New York. May we have the prayer, please. Good morning, class. Let us bow our hearts and minds. Heavenly Father Yahweh, we thank you for this opportunity of hope through faith that we too can worship you in spirit and in truth, having on the complete armor of your begotten son, our savior and king, Yahshua, the Messiah that we may hold fast against the devil and his cohorts operating the mystery of iniquity through the dispensation of time. These are just some of the things on our hearts and mind at this present moment in this present age and dispensation. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 Great is your mercy toward me, your loving kindness toward me, your tender mercy I see day after day. Forever faithful toward me, you're always providing for me. Great is your mercy toward me, great is your grace forever faithful toward me you're always providing for me great is your mercy toward me Great is your grace. Great is your grace. Hallelujah. 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 Okay. Perhaps love is like a resting place. A shelter from the storm. It exists to give you comfort. It is there to keep you warm. And in those times of trouble, when you are most alone, the memories of love will take you home. Perhaps love is like a window, perhaps an open door. It invites you to come closer. It wants to show you more. And even if you lose yourself and don't know what to do, the memories of love will see you through. Oh, love to some is like a cloud, to some as strong as steel. For some, a way of living. For some, a way to feel. Some say love is holding on and some say letting go. Some say love is everything. Some say they don't know. Perhaps love is like the ocean, full of conflict, full of pain. 
Like a fire when it's cold outside, thunder when it rains. If I should leave forever and all my dreams come true, my memories of love will be in Yeshua. My memories of love will be in Yeshua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. you so much. Dr. Hallelujah. Deborah Van Hook and Dr. Carlton Gordon. We will now have our scripture reading. Good morning, brethren. Good morning. I'll be reading from a King James Schofield Bible, Isaiah 28, 9 through 13, Hebrews 9, 1, 6 through 14, 1 John 5, 6 through 8. Isaiah 28 and 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue, will he speak to this people? To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. But the word of Yahweh was unto them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Hebrews 9 and 1. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine services and a worldly sanctuary. Six verse. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of Yahweh. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. The Holy Spirit, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience, which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and cardinal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. But the Messiah being come, a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of the Messiah, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to Yahweh, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living Elohim. First John five and six. This is he that came by water and blood, even Yahshua the Messiah, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that beareth witness, because the spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, 
and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree in one. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 We are so grateful yes. to be gathered hallelujah. here this morning. We thank everyone for their participation. I will now turn this class over to our host, Dr. Lenore Allen. Good morning, everyone. I want to thank everybody for taking part in the class so far. And I also want to um, thank everybody for getting up early and gathering with us today with the knowledge that we're going to be going over one of the things that really sets this school apart, the understanding of blood, water, and spirit. And I just happened to be um, looking at a class that was done on Wednesday where Dr. Terry Welch was talking about how very important it was and that we should be um, going over these things. I said, wow, the spirit is working because I was thinking about that and he was thinking about that. So that's great. It must be one spirit. But anyway, I wanted to um, talk about uh, the fact that a lot of work has been done um, with the different members of the school to break this teaching down so that you can know this for yourself. And I just wanted to share that uh, that Lansing in particular has a a, 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 a a website where you can learn more about this teaching and a lot of uh, a, a, a lot of the classes are there and then a lot of information is there. So if you ever want to know about something, it's all written out. You can have it. You can print it. You can give it to your friends. It really is a school, but unlike most schools, we're not. They're not charging you or anything. Whatever we have, we receive that it was. We see that it was given to us freely, and therefore we must share it with the world freely. And I was just thinking about when they went to building this tabernacle. It came to a point that Yahweh had provided to the, the things to the Egyptians when they're getting ready to leave Egypt, when Israel's getting ready to leave Egypt, all that they have to do is go and he says, go and take borrow from your neighbors, the Egyptians. So when they went to their neighbors, the Egyptians were like, here, take it. Now, when Yahweh gets ready to, to make this tabernacle, he asked them to give a free will offering. Oh, there is no such thing as free will. Well, that's the way this tabernacle was built. And then when you go on to read, that's the way the temple was built, that it was in the people's heart. And they so they would ask them to give the things that were going to be made and to be used in this tabernacle. And what happened is that they came to a point where there was so much stuff that they just had to say, all right, stop. We don't need any more. We've got what we need. And I was thinking about when you look, when you look in the school, you you look at righteousness, but you also are able to see unrighteousness. It becomes more clear, and you'll see that you know sometimes a a church will have a building fund, and they're always collecting and collecting and collecting, and they never say, oh, we got enough. You know, we got we got everything. We got every nail. We got every every board, everything we need enough. It, it, there's never enough. And, you know, you'll just see, you know, on, on the television that there are ministers who are living in these big, huge houses. And um, they're, they're never saying, no, I don't, I don't, you know, it's like, I got, it's me, my wife and my kid. Why do I have to live in a mansion? They don't look at it that way. And um, even I was looking at one of the, and I'm not into rap, but I was looking at one of these rappers and he was talking about why, why do these wealthy people have these huge mansions and everything and, and, and me and my mother don't have a place to live. Well, it's because of the nature of the mystery of iniquity that is operating and has been allowed to rule this creation. But I wanted to show you that um, if you go to IDMR, idmrlansing.blog that on one side it says classes on the other side it says learn more and then you can find a lot of information and things that have been gone over in the class and I wanted to show let me see 
I wanted to show this is where I got the um, scripture reading for from today. Blood, water, spirit, 40 correlations on the elementary chart of the pattern or plan of salvation. And this came from, if you just go to your, to the internet, idmrlansing.blog. And then here's the scripture readings that we were looking at. So what I wanted us to do today is to, um, we can, we could just read this over, then we can go to the chart and it's like there's seven plates going across on the top seven plates on the bottom usually we get mixed up on the bottom plate so what i wanted to do was take the time and you know ask people to volunteer or i could just show you how all of these different stories are going according to blood water and spirit and then to to take to take like the first eh, 30 minutes to be going over that and then take the hour on the bottom chart because that's the one that usually people like like myself you take off like ah i don't know but we're going to take the time to go over this so um can we look can we read can we read the first the first scripture reading isaiah 28 9 and 10. isaiah 28 9 and 10. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little, and there a little. Okay, and when you look at the chart, um, and this, this was something that was very that was very interesting to me is that, let me make this thing smaller. Well, okay, we can leave it like this. When you look at, this is called the chart and the, the pattern or plan of salvation. And as I understand it, that this was like the first one that Dr. Kinley made. And basically he was just trying to show the vision that he had. And sometimes people would say to him, I wish I could have the vision that you had and he said, help yourself. And the thing that I wanted us to keep in mind is that all of these, all of these stories, um, when you listen to comedians, they'll be making fun of Adam and Eve, they'll be making fun of Noah, they'll be making fun of a uh, virgin birth because they don't see how that's possible. They see, they don't see that's possible because they don't see a pattern that is going down through the law and the prophets to show forth himself. So he's talking about line upon line. So you have a bloodline over here. It talks about the lamb of, of Yahweh. He offered up his blood. You got this tabernacle pattern and you have this blood on this altar. You see, you, you see that they had to take the blood of the lamb was what they had to put on the door in order for them to get up out of Egypt. You'd see back down here that there was blood um, of this on this ram, so that the sun was not offered up. The lamb, the ram was in fact offered up. You see that the children of uh, the the people back here, um, when the when the preacher spoke to them, the blood or the responsibility or the accountability was put on their head, and that when Adam and Eve broke broke the commandment and came down here that their blood or their blood line was tainted and they in fact needed a savior and it talks it talks about here um showing forth that's okay it, it's showing forth here that this lineage is is defunct so that they're going to have to have so everybody who comes in is under that original sin and can we get um Excuse me, uh, Dr. Allen, before you um, proceed, notice this serpent down here in the bottom of the plate. Yes. You will notice that it is red. Right. And so that means that, that the, when Adam fell, <clears throat> pardon me, when he disobeyed, that blood went to the four corners of the earth. Right. And which is, is made representative of the serpent here being red because you will notice he's black coming out of the holy place 
Right. And then when it's on the ground, he's red. So that is also the bloodline there. Yeah, so for the bloodline. But I wanted right. um that the the it's a, that the children's teeth are set on edge. Mm -hmm. Is that is that Jeremiah? Oh, and I want to show you this real fast. Uh Okay. Um Okay, so this shows the blood water spirit and it is it's in the uh pattern of the universe and it's also showing the scriptures that go along with it. So I just wanted to show you that these things are available. They're on the internet. They are for you. Uh, um, do you want that set at edge, Jeremiah 31, 29? Yeah, could you get that, please? In those days, they shall say no more. The fathers have eaten a sour grape and the children's teeth are set on edge. But everyone shall die for his own inequity. Every man that eateth the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge. So this is the thing. This is the thing that the world doesn't understand. You know, you come in and then you can get an understanding. When they made that error and they went against the law, and you got to understand that nobody nobody was able to keep these laws that's how come you had to have a savior come in that's why how can you have a savior if nobody needs salvation you know what i'm saying if we had if we had fire stations all over the city but there's never any fires people say well you know let's cut this budget we don't need this but we definitely when we see the, the terrible things that happen people in fires okay we need a fire we need a fire station well here it says, in those days, I shall say no more. The fathers have eaten a sour grape and the children's teeth are set on edge. The fathers, Adam and Eve, they're the ones that ate of that olive. And then all through down, all through down um, humanity, everybody is subject to, to breaking of that law. But he's saying that after the Messiah comes in, but everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eateth the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge. So there's going to be an opportunity for salvation to be in the man. So what I wanted to do, uh, let's look at this. I'm trying to think of the best way to do this. Okay, so I wanted to show you, um, let, me, let me pick up this thing over here. Okay, why don't we just read through these, through the first seven, and then go back and then look at the pictures. So you'll have the words, and then you'll have the pictures. Any problems? Okay, so is Dr. Warren here this morning, Doc. I don't see him on the. Oh, I guess he's not. Okay, so uh, we will have to. Uh, uh, I will read uh, along with the uh, Dr. Marie Winters, if that's okay. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. <laughs> Surely. Uh, shall I begin? Yeah. So if you want to just read. Okay, uh, the interior uh, pattern of the tabernacle. Blood, blood of sacrifices on four horns and at the bottom of the altar. Water, brazen labor had water for washing. Spirit, spirit is symbolized by the holy anointing oil. Forty, forty and four points in the holy place. The door is the fourth step. Mainstream. Main um, stem. I, I'm sorry, main stem, the fourth branch. The, the table has four corners. And then there are four ingredients in the incense. Okay, you know what? I, I feel like we got to go back and forth. Okay. Um, uh, 
points. Can you split the screen? No, not really. Okay. Uh, there's a, a hand up here, uh, yes. Jackie McCain. Yes. Okay, like on what he said, the horns, the horns are not on the bottom of the altar. You can find that in Exodus 27. Oh, the horns are right here. Who right. said bottom? His Why do you say bottom? bottom of the altar. Let me see. Do you see bottom? Let me see that. His paper said that. Let me see. Let me see. Now I got to go back. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Where is this thing? Four points at the front and at the bottom. Blood of sacrifices on four points and at the bottom of the altar. And it's not. It says the four horns and thou shalt oh, make. talking about when the blood was poured out. I don't want, okay, I don't want to get into that, but it's like there's four horns, four blood on the four horns of the altar. I don't understand the bottom. I know sometimes it was poured out. So, but I, let's get the print, let's get the manifestations. We got blood, we got water, we got spirit, right? And 40. Uh, and 40. Boy, it's hard for me to go back and forth. What is the problem? Uh, okay, so you got on this, and let's get the big pattern since we got this here. So you got blood, right? You got water, you got spirit, which was shown through the holy anointing oil. Then you go into um, the most holy place. And he was talking about the, the door is the fourth step. You have the um, lampstand. You have this branch here. This is the fourth stem. You have four um, sides to this table. So you have a principle of 40 in the holy place. So, can, okay. I'm trying to think, what do you think would be the best way to do this? Okay, then you get four sides to the table of incense. Okay, so the transgression. You want to read it? Transgression. Before you go further, the 40 in the holy place. Yes. You got from the from the candlestick to the altars, 10 feet, from the altar to the shoe braid is 10 feet, and back to the door is 10 feet. That's where you pick up your 40. Okay. In the holy place. But there's lots of fours. Okay. okay. So there's also another hand up here. Okay. Dr. Sybil Lewis. Uh, good morning. Good um, morning. My question is addressed to Dr. Lenore Allen. Um, uh, that uh, where Dr. Kane was um, addressing, um, is that from a paper that was from Lansing yes. Wright? Yes, it is. I, I explained that, that you can go to idmrlansing.blog, and it's a paper that was on the blog. Okay, was she saying that um, uh, the the something about being under? What's it's that? Even at the bottom of the altar, there was blood. I don't know about that, but we do know. Let's, you know, we got new people with us, so let's. That's why on I'm asking. That we do know. No, I it's. I know it's, about that, but let's look at that on the horns of the altar. On the four horns, blood was placed on there. That's right. On the horns of the altar. That's I right. About the, but let's focus on what we do know. That's right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. May I say this? That uh, I think that it was good for Jackie to uh, bring that out. As you say, we have new people. So right. those errors 
should or questions. They may not be errors, but they are questions. That's and right. they should be brought out at the time that we are dis discussing it. And that that's all I want to say. Having new people, I think that's important. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Dr. Sybil Lewis, do you still have a question or a comment? Oh, oh I'm sorry. I didn't put my hands down, but I just, I just want to say this also that, yes, it is important. Um, that's why I raised it, you know, because we do have a new person on, um, uh, our sister, Tracy, and we trying to do all our best to you know, make it as simple as possible so that one, she can understand and also, also for us, you know. But that is true. And I don't understand about the blood at the bottom, but we do no, understand. I, well, let's focus on what we do know. No, yes, I'm not focusing on, on that, Lenore. I'm not talking about the blood under the altar or anything. And you're right. We want to make it simple, but the pattern is the key and we have to, that's important. And so, the four points of blood, that's, that's the principle, the blood on the four points of the altar in the pattern, tabernacle pattern. Thank you. Uh, shall we continue? Yes. I'll I take my hand love. down. I'm just sending my love. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Uh, the, here we are. We have uh, Roman numeral one, which says transgression. The blood is Adam's blood that went to the four corners of the earth. His blood to be avenged on the serpent. That's why you have that red uh, down there in the bottom uh, uh, in the court roundabout there of the first plate. What that mean? Excuse me? I'm sorry, I didn't know my mic was open. But I just didn't understand his blood to avenge the serpent. Maybe somebody can explain. He said that. avenged on the serpent. When you look at that plate, it said the serpent was going to have to crawl on his belly. That's what's written on, on the bottom of that plate. Can we go back to the uh, elementary chart probably and blow up that plate so that we can see? Perhaps that would be a help. And just read what is in the plate. No, we want the elementary I chart. I understand that. That's a mistake. All right. Okay, where is it? Okay, yes. Yes. Can we just blow that up so that we can read? What is in there? Okay. 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 Wow. See where it says Genesis three and one, and it said on his belly with the serpent there. Mm -hmm. And that is brought out in 2 Corinthians 11 and 3. Dr. Marie, uh, can you please read that? You want the Genesis or the Corinthians one? Uh, read the, the Genesis and the Corinthians one. Okay, Genesis. Because, because Yahweh did not curse Adam and Eve. He cursed the serpent. That's why it says, Av de avenged on the serpent. So please read that. Okay, the three one is where he meets Eve in the garden. Mm -hmm. If you want to go down where he cursed the serpent. Right, and then go to 2 Corinthians 11 and 3. I think it says that's where it says the woman was deceived. I believe that's what it says. I'm not no, sure. No, that's the yeah. Timothy one. No, it says, but I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning 
your minds may someone be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Yahshua. Okay, now read where Yahweh cursed the serpent in Genesis, please. Okay, it's Genesis 3, 17. And Adam's, and unto Adam he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying thou shalt not eat of it, Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Okay, so uh, okay. Dr. McCain, do you see where he cursed the serpent there? And where it oh, says that I blood was a, avenged upon the serpent? Yes, thank you. You're quite I, I can't find the serpent one. That, that was Adam, because the ground being cursed was also in there. Okay, let me see. It, it's got to be close to, to yeah it says cursed is the ground for thy sake by yeah, the sweat that, of thy face oh you mean 14 where Yahweh says um, Yahweh Elohim said unto the serpent because thou hast done this thou art cursed above all cattle That's the one. above every beast of the right. field upon thy belly shall thou go and thou shalt eat dust all the mm -hmm. days of thy life and I there will put enmity between mm -hmm. thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Mm -hmm. So therefore, that when you when you look at the two covenants chart and you see Yahshua on the cross, you see the serpent coming up to the cross. Right. And so he's bruising his head, and Yahshua is uh, is bruising. You see the heel and the head there. The head of the serpent, his his feet are above the head, and yes. he's bruising the heel. That's what that's pointing to. Because Yahshua was coming in to fulfill. Yeah. And Yahshua is going to take him out. He did take him out. Okay. All right, let me see, let me see. I don't know that this is the best method to go with this doc, but. Well, you know what? We're taking it one thing at a time. People are mm -hmm. asking questions. So the second one is, let me see, what's the second one? Uh, let me see, where is this thing? And this is not easy, huh? Okay, okay so, we, we're still at the transgression. Right. Okay, so it says blood. Adam's blood went to the four corners of the earth. His blood to be avenged on the serpent. Right. We did that. Okay, the second was water. And Adam had to work by the sweat or water of his face outside the garden. Right. And then the spirit is the angel Michael drove them out from the garden and guarded the way back. And 40 is Adam was at rest in the garden, 40 days of Moses' vision. And it's great at this point, Doc, to mention that that first plate on the elementary chart is a descending plate. So it is the spirit, the water, and the blood. Okay. Because they're coming out, they're coming down. Okay, so yes, they are coming out. Where is this baby? All right. So you're at the bottom of the chart. That's the bottom plate. Okay, right. Okay, here we are. Yeah, right there. So you see, uh, you see they're coming out of the garden. So that's why you you're looking at that principle, blood, water, spirit, and 40. But it's really, it is, I, I just want to point out that it is a downward, it's a, a it is called the descending plate. So it's spirit, water, blood. Mm-hmm. I mean, so you're looking at that, you can look at it either way, but I'm just saying that's yeah, so I want to point out that it's a descending it's, plate. Yeah, this it starts up here, that mm -hmm. coming on down, out. Mm -hmm. And then it's running. 
So and on some and on some plates, you'll see the people usually have red on their heads because they were not believing uh, Noah's report. Well, I with mean, the one with one. Adam, you got Romans five twelve. Uh -huh. right. That's the Therefore, death. is by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. And mm -hmm. so death passed upon all men. This this is the blood. And it yes. was because of that lie of the serpent. So the serpent, just like in Noah's time, preaching to the people, the, the blood is on the serpent's head mm -hmm. for this deception that caused all to die in Adam. Mm hmm so that that's and the sweat of his brow that's in the book so when he came out you know the spirit michael that's the spirit and he came out by the sweat of his brow now he's got to work the ground and death passed upon all men and the, the serpent is the one with the blood on his head for that lie yeah and you yeah. see that black okay. dot there while we're on that plate yes. that's what is romans 5 and 11 5 and 14 yes um could you read that, Dr. Murray? That's, there's a beautiful principle there. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, mm -hmm. even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. Mm -hmm. Now, would you wonder why that, that, that dot is there that looks like a dot, right? A big dot? Yeah. Okay, would you go to the plate directly below it? Because we're talking about here. This is the first Adam, right? You see that dot big? That's Joshua coming out. The second Adam, the first Adam going down, the second Adam coming up. Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. In fact, it's in it's one it's in one of the um transcripts. I can't remember, but I remember one time mm -hmm. I did ask. Beverly Allen about that. Well, what is that? Mm -hmm. And she was able to tell me the the transcript, the page, the mm -hmm. paragraph. I was like, whoa. Mm -hmm. So yeah, everything is significant, whether we can see it or not. Oh yeah. Thank you, Doc. Would you mind repeating that for me, please? I missed it. Are you referring to the dot there? Yeah, she wants to know about the dots. Okay, you see that dot there, Doctor Lewis. You see, that's where Adam was put Does in. Does she have a screen? Do you, can you see a screen? Yeah. Yes, okay. I'm looking at the screen. Okay. You see where it says Romans 5 and 13 next to that dot? 14. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, Romans 5 and 14? Yes. Can you see that, Dr. Uh, Lewis? Um, uh, tell me where you're pointing. Um, my screen is kind of blurred. Romans 5 and 14. Okay. It's right Where up under the Oh, title. yes, yes, I see it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I see it. Okay. Did you need the explanation? Yes, please. Okay. Adam went in into that's that's a, that's like an into a grave there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Adam, the first Adam went down into that hole, in other words. And the second Adam, if you go to the bottom, you see Yahshua coming out of that? The first Adam went down, the second Adam came up. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. It's overcoming yes. death, hell, and the grave. Yes, yes, exactly. So I'm just showing you that little <laughs> hole at the top and the big hole at the bottom. And I think it's even here, too. Mm-hmm. Well, this one talks about this baptism and ministry, so you got it here also. Yeah, that's where he says he's uh, it's coming on. Fulfilling. Okay, thank you very much. You're quite welcome. Yeah, that was good. So the next one, I got the paper, so I don't have to keep going back and forth. The next okay. one talks about... Um, yeah, you'll have to read the paper because I don't have the paper, Doc. Yeah, the next one talks about... Uh, okay, so do we want to talk about Adam was at rest in the Garden of Eden, 40 days of Moses' vision. So when he goes, when this is all showing forth Moses' vision, when he goes, when he um, goes up into the, um, when he goes up into the Mount, Yahweh shows him seven days of creation. 
Mm-hmm. And he shows him 33 days of his tabernacle pattern. Mm-hmm. Now, when he comes back, then, then when he comes back up, he's seeing, he sees the, oh, so when he, when he comes down here, he's thinking about those, wait a minute, do I have this right? The 33 days. Seven days of the creation and 33 days of the specifications of the tabernacle. Yeah, which is that first, that's that was Moses' uh, trip, his first trip up to that part of the mount, which was that first forty that you see. He's got them at rest when he's yes. up, when he's seeing this, right. and then when and he that's, comes down, and, and that's where Yahweh calls him out. Right. He sees Adam and Eve at rest because he, he hasn't seen them. The transgression, yeah. Transgression. So right. when he's in, when he comes down here, he's got them in his mind that they're at rest in the garden. That's why he's so upset when when they when he sees them with the golden calf. Like, you know right. what you talking about. He has why he breaks the table. Up. So then when he comes back up again, you got the seven days that he's seeing them at rest. And then he sees the transgression. So you right, got, that's where your elementary chart begins, right 30, there. Yeah. So you got seven plus thirty-three. Mm-hmm. So that's how you have a principle of forty of him seeing according to his vision mm-hmm. them at rest. And if I haven't done that plain enough, there's a whole pamphlet about that. So, You're right. Forty days in the garden. That that pamphlet. Okay. So according to Moses' vision. Okay. Mm-hmm. According to the vision. So we're looking here, and the next one is the Noah preparation entering into the ark. Now on the paper it says, Noah. Noah warned the wicked, getting the blood off his head and onto their heads. Mm -hmm. That was the blood. The Mm -hmm. water was the flood. Mm -hmm. And the spirit is the angel of Yahweh showed Noah how to build the ark and call the animals and shut them in the ark. Mm-hmm. So um, let me make this big again. Because what's good about it is they're showing that Yahweh is speaking to him. Let me see. No. I'm sorry, this is so slow. You're seeing, you're seeing here that Yahweh is interacting mm-hmm. with Noah, and that he's he's talking to him now. There's going to be a flood, mm-hmm. and then the spirit, the forty is that it rained, it rained forty days and mm-hmm. forty nights. Mm-hmm. Blood, water, spirit, mm-hmm. forty. Mm-hmm. Let me make this bigger. And if we want to get, um, do we want to read Ezekiel? You want to read Ezekiel 33? Yeah, then we'll read Ezekiel 33. Ezekiel. Okay, I get it. Ezekiel 33, starting at one. Okay. Again, the word of Yahweh came on to me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall it be upon his own head. He hear the sound of the trumpet and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, He is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. Yeah, so 
if you, if you don't listen, you'll suffer. If, if somebody doesn't tell you, then you'll also suffer. But, the, but the, the responsibility was on the watchman. And so Noah was the watchman. He's going for 120 years. And he is telling the people that there is going to, that the sky is going to leak, as people say, or that the creation is going to come to an end. And many people did not listen, and therefore they died. And it talks about in the beginning the wickedness of the people. So because the, the people were so wicked, Yahweh was going to put an end to that. And the ones who listened were going to enter into the ark. And it was a good point that's often made about when they went into the ark, the animals just came and they went in by spirit law, just like you see animals knowing, oh, it's time to, the, the birds know it's, it's time to go, it's just not time to go away, it's time to go down south. And you'll even see when there's tsunamis, when they had a tsunami sometime, all of a sudden the animals started leaving. And the people were going, the people at the shore were like, well, what is that? Because when you have a tsunami, the water goes way out. And the people were walking into the water, like into off, you know, past the shoreline saying, what's going on? They got killed. The animals, they're acting by spirit law. They got out of there. They head for, they head for the high hills. So that's the blood, water, spirit with Noah. Now the next one is called Abraham and King Melchizedek. And it talks about Abraham and Melchizedek, the blood, the sacrificial blood of a ram caught in the thickets, the water, the sweat of Isaac from carrying the wood uphill and facing death because he says, where's the sacrifice? Oh, Yahweh's gonna provide a sacrifice. And the spirit is the angel of Yahweh stopped Abraham from killing Isaac. And the 40 is Ishmael was 40 years old when Isaac is sacrificed at age 25. So that's the blood, the water, and the spirit. And the uh, doc, Dr. Allen, may I also say this is, is while we're at it, this is, this particular plate on all of the elementary charts is not drawn out this way. And it is also a descending plate. What do you mean it's not drawn out this way? Uh, on, um, on a lot of elementary charts, there, where, where this plate is, there's just a bar that says uh, Hebrews or, or the... Uh, it, it's not drawn, this plate is not drawn out on all of the elementary charts, is what I'm saying. Oh, um, yeah, some of them right. didn't include it. Right, right. So I just wanted to uh, put that in because uh, on everybody's elementary chart, this plate is not uh, broken down this way. But I also want to just tell you, it's also a descending plate because uh, at the top of the plate, you will see where Abraham meets Melchizedek. And, you know, the birth of Isaac is down there. And then Isaac is a grown man here in the court roundabout. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, in other words, when we're talking about blood, water, spirit in 40, it's also uh, good to mention about the direction of the plates. Okay. And then we have here the migratory pattern. And it talks about if somebody's um, chatting, please just say what you got to say because I can't see the chats. Okay, so um, migratory pattern: the blood is the blood of the Passover lamb mm -hmm. stuck on the door at four points. Mm -hmm. so you have that here, and the Red Sea parted, making a way for Israel to escape Pharaoh. So that's the Red Sea is waters. Mm -hmm. The spirit is the angel of Yahweh in the cloud with Joshua mm -hmm. bringing them over. And 40, Israel was in the wilderness of Sinai for 40 years. Mm -hmm. So the blood is the Passover lamb. The water is the Red Sea. Spirit, angel of Yahweh, 40. <coughs> in the wilderness of Sinai, 40 years. Anybody else have anything to say? Oh, yeah, look, you have that here. Mm-hmm.
you have that little showing forth. How that, that lamb was pointing to Yahshua being the true lamb. And they had to have that lamb in them in order mm -hmm. to in order to escape their enemies. And the thing that I always like to look at when you look at that story in particular was that the children of Israel was looking at the clouds, so they were following the spirit. The Egyptians were following them, the Israelites, they were following the flesh. So the, the flesh, the ones following the flesh died, the ones that were following the spirit lived. So it's, it's, a, it's a good lesson for us all. Right. You and, the spirit and you will have life. Right. And the Egyptians also saw fire. You know, the, the children of Israel were in the light. But, uh, you know, it, it said they that, dark, you know, sad. they couldn't see, you know, they, uh, they couldn't see the, uh, the children of Israel because Yahweh, you know, got between them going out. Yeah, he, yeah, mm -hmm. he, and it shows one is in darkness and one is in the mm -hmm. light. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Dr. Uh, Lewis, did you have something to say? Um, I'm going to come right back. Um, uh, I can't speak right at this moment. I'm going to come back, though. Okay, so the next one is... Joshua's baptism and ministry. Wait a moment, is that it? Oh no, it's, it's the interior of the tabernacle pattern. Mm -hmm. So you have the blood on the oh, altar. Sorry. Yes. Did you have something to say? I mean, yes, I do. Um, sorry about that, um, Dr. Allen. Um, Yes, I just wanted, um, I like how Dr. Van Hook had mentioned the uh, direction of the play, because that's important. And we're, we're talking about the migratory pattern. Is that right? We were. Yes. Oh, you finished that? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I'm going to say, go ahead, say it. Okay. Um, I just wanted to mention the direction of that plate for uh, we see that um, the direction of that plate is an upward and downward operation um, because we see when the children of Israel, well, they came from Canaan's land mm -hmm. and they went down into Egypt. We know there's a lot of details that would explain that, but they went down into Egypt. So this, migra this migratory pattern is talking about the migration from Egypt, of course, first of all, as I said, down, they, they had to go down into the land of Egypt. They were in slavery and bondage. And then we find that leaving Egypt, they're going to migrate. Their journey is going to take them back to Canaan's land. And it just shows that migratory pattern and the tabernacle pattern is all also an upward and downward operation. It is important to know that because it's telling us how the soul is my, in its migration or the process that the soul has to go through. So I just wanted to mention that. Okay, that's good. Okay, we talked about the interior part. So now we got Yahshua's baptism and ministry. Let me blow this baby up. Oh. Okay, so it says baptism and ministry here. Mm -hmm. And here we're looking down in the court roundabout. It says the blood, the blood of Yahshua was prepared and declared at the beginning of his ministry to take sin away. So he is called the Lamb of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Been seeing for quite a while that those lambs of Yahweh are offered up every day with the tabernacle pattern. When they have the Passover, this lamb is, is killed and they're supposed to be keeping in memory why this, this thing was done. 
So you got the Lamb of Yahweh, uh, the Lamb of Yahweh. When he comes in and says he's 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 the Lamb. Well, then this Lamb was killed for the children of Israel. So then this one is going to have to be killed. The water Yahshua was baptized in water by John to fulfill the law. Mm -hmm. So we have that here. The mm -hmm. spirit, as like a dove, descended and remained on Yahshua in the vision to John. Mm -hmm. And Yahshua was tempted by the devil or tested by the devil in the wilderness of Judea 40, 40 days, mm -hmm. yet he did not sin. And somebody might want to know, well, what's the difference between tempting and testing? And it's like Yahweh, it, it talks about in James that Yahweh cannot be tested by evil. Mm -hmm. He can't be tempted by even tempted. Not, tempted. He's he does not fall victim to temptation. So this was a test here, and he overcame to sh he overcame to show that that spirit is the overcomer. So receiving the Holy Spirit, you're going to receive the spirit of the overcomer in you. So does anybody else else have anything else to say? Yeah, that was a good point, Doctor Allen. Because we, oftentimes we, uh, uh, when we give our testimonies, we say t that he was tempted where he's fasting at 40 days and 40 nights and the adversary um, was, uh, we used the word tempt, but I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, it is testing rather than tempting. I, um, I like how that was brought out. Thank you. Okay, anybody else have anything to say about that? Silence. So the next one is 1 John 5, 7 through 8. Mm -hmm. Talks about the unity of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And we have that read in the scripture reading. And it talks about... Okay, well, why don't we just read it? 1 John 5, 7 and 8. You started at six, didn't you? Okay, six, okay. This is he that came by water and blood, even Yahshua the Messiah, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that beareth witness, because the spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. Okay, so we're looking at this. If you look at the ages, oh God, and dispensations, you're entering into the present kingdom age. This principle of a 40, or he's talking about for 40 centuries, the spirit is witnessed by blood and water and Yahshua as the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit embodied people born by blood, water, spirit, and 40. Boy, that's a mouthful. So then when we look over here at the crucifixion, it talks about the blood and water. Yasha is pictured, is pierced in the side, in the side, and the blood of atonement and water came out. So spirit and so blood and water came out of his piercing the spirit. Yahshua died, gave up the spirit on the cross, raised a quickening spirit to give eternal life. And 40, Yahshua tarried on the earth. 40 days showing himself after he resurrects from the dead. So there's blood and water coming out of here, blood and water coming out of the side. The spirit is that he gives up, he laid down his life. That's the thing that the world doesn't see is that he gave up his life willingly. They could not take it from him. He gave it to him. He gave it, he, he gave up his life and then the 40 is that he is out here and he is seen for um, 40 days. And, you know, I just want to get this. Can we get 1 Corinthians 15 and 1? Um, yes. Uh, 
First Corinthians 15 and 1. First Corinthians. Is someone uh, speaking or, or please mute yourself. Go ahead, Dr. Allen. I'm I'm uh first Corinthians 15 and 1. Okay. First Corinthians 15 and 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Mm -hmm. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that the, how that the Messiah died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Keep reading. And that he was seen of Cyphus, then of the twelve. So that he would, that's the thing that was so amazing about the thing. It's just not, I can tell you something, but he proved it. He was seen. He walked in. They, they were, they were, they were walking down the road and they, you know, they saw him. He, um, they were eating and, you know, he comes in among them. He's <coughs> sorry. He was seen. Can you keep reading? Six. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. Right. After that, he was seen of James, then of the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. So Saul is, Saul is saying that he saw, saw him also. And can you just read nine? For I am the least of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the assembly of Yahweh. So he's talking about on the way to Damascus, he's Yahweh appears to him. But the, during those 40 days, Yahweh appeared and he appeared and he appeared. So that, that's the thing that's so amazing. It did, he didn't just say it, he did it. And you can look at... Um, What's so neat about this doctrine is that you can see it in your everyday life. You can see that um, you may have a horrible winter and some places in the country are already getting snow. I heard they were supposed to be getting snow in um, uh, um, Buffalo. I don't know if they got it or not, but they were supposed to be looking for feet of snow to come. And so you just, it's, it's cold and it's nasty and it's dark. And I remember one year, it was so bad around here that, the, and we were, Yahweh was setting up that they were getting snow every weekend. So you look forward to the weekend to be able to relax and everything. And you got to be out there with your shovels and your snow blower, getting the, the wind and the, dealing with the wind and the ice and everything. And it was like happening every weekend. It's like, to me, it's like they were being tormented, you know, for people who have to get up and go to work. And I remember one time it just started snowing just a little bit. And this man stood in the middle of the street, just started screaming, you know, so. Uh, let me say this now, I'm going to shut up. Snow denotes the satanic spirit. Mm -hmm. I'll, t I'll tell you about it one day, but that's what snow yeah, they're buried in snow. Snow is six, six, six. I'll tell you about it one day. But but the point is, but in the spring, even among the snow, sometimes you'll just see this little. Even in New York City, you'll see these crocuses coming up, showing that wonderful resurrection from the dead. And in the midst of the winter, you wouldn't, you don't even think about. What is a what does a heat wave? Sometimes in the, you're walking down the street and it's really nice. What does a heat wave even feel like? You can't even relate. Mm -hmm. But what Yahweh does, and He does it even according to this calendar that we use, the third week, the third month, the third week from March the third week. That's when it's officially spring, and life comes forth. So He's just showing that death, burial, and resurrection is being demonstrated by the very world that we live in. Does so anybody else have anything else to say? Yes, yes, Dr. Uh, Allen. Thank you very much. This bottom plate 
here, which is a an ascending plate, and it is a very, very important plate. So if you see in the bottom, it says here death, right? Down here, that is pointing to your blood principle, the death, right? And then up to your left here, it says burial. That is your water principle because the Messiah was, after he died, he was buried, right? In mm -hmm. the tomb. Mm -hmm. Now, as you move up to the holy place, you will see resurrection. Okay, so death, burial, resurrection, blood, water, spirit, right? Because he raised a quickening spirit. And also, it, it should properly read in the Bible that he was seen by Kepha and the ten because Judas was dead. Right. Okay, so then you have you have the resurrection. I'm just reading the plate now. Okay, and so he's resurrecting here. Okay, and then so you have blood, water, spirit, and then in the top here you have ascension, which is pointing to that forty, right? Because after his resurrection, right? He tarried on the earth plane 40 days. Mm -hmm. Then he ascended. So I thought that was very important to point that out because that is not brought out in this way in your other plates. But the fact that you're talking about the principles of blood, water, spirit, and 40, and we're on the bottom plates, I think it's very important to bring that out. Okay, that's good. Anybody else have anything else? Any, anybody else? Um, this is Miss Robinson, of course, and uh, I'm not going to uh, address the plate, but I just wanted to tell you, uh, Lenore, that uh, I heard yesterday and again this morning that in some areas uh, in or around Buffalo, they've already had five feet, feet oh, wow. of snow. And, are still, and it's still snowing there. That's just for your info. Yeah, that hurts. <laughs> not well, it, it helps me because here we've only had, a, you know, scattering amounts of snow uh, immeasurable really so we don't know what we're going to get here in Michigan okay I'm gone get out okay, of the way good. so then the next thing is the persecution plate mm -hmm. and it shows the blood wait a moment oh no 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 it's Pentecost Pentecost it shows the Holy Spirit the blood and water, Holy Spirit made apostles understand that Yahshua mm -hmm. was the cup of the blood of the New Testament and the word of Yahweh who washed their feet with water at the Last Supper. So when they received the Holy Spirit, then they could understand what he was doing when he was saying, this is my body, this mm -hmm. is my blood. He's talking about when he was feeding them, and then when he's washing them, they can understand that they have, that he is the word of Yahweh. In fact, it says it over here, a word that he is mm -hmm. the word of Yahweh, and he he is washing them, and he's washing their feet, and it's pointing to washing their souls, so that there's mm -hmm. going to be a, there's a resurrection, a change going going on in their souls. So the the spirit is the promise of the Holy Spirit. It was given at Pentecost. Mm -hmm. And the Pentecost was, oh, they said there was 120 people in the upper room. It was mm -hmm. also the fourth age. So when you get 120, that's 340s. So it's 120 people in the upper room. So you got 40 up there. You got it was the fourth age. And they said that Pentecost was June the 6th, the 34th birthday of Yahshua. And it says, Six June the six plus thirty four years equals six plus thirty four equals forty. So, anybody else got anything else to say? It's 
Simon. Was there, a, excuse me, was there a correlation that Jane made with a 40 talking about the snow? I didn't even hear that part. No, uh, it oh. was not. I was just addressing Lenore had said that she had heard that there was a lot of snow coming to Buffalo. And I was letting her know that yesterday and again this morning, and these were two different news uh, shows that I was watching that they said in some areas of Buffalo, and Buffalo is not that large, they already had five feet of snow and that uh, it was continuing to snow. So I wasn't, I mentioned initially that I wasn't addressing the plate. So I was just uh, giving Lenore that information. And I okay. had talked about that because I was talking about death, burial, resurrection, and that people get buried in snow. And that, oh, okay. and that they were talking about that there was going to be snow in Buffalo. And they, they were saying three feet, but she's saying five feet. They got buried. So, and I was just talking about in the spring, you see these crocuses coming up. So it's, it's pointing to a, a resurrection coming out of a death-like state. And I was just saying that during the, the winter, sometimes you don't, you can't even imagine a hot day. You know, when you're taking the ice off of your windshield, it's mm -hmm. like, what is, what is heat like? <laughs> so, yeah. So that's how I got it. But, but, but I was just trying to show the blood, water, spirit, death, burial, resurrection. They do go together. And yes, thank you. So we're looking at the persecution plate over here. And I like it that they showed the, the, the mystery. You got the, the woman, she's clothed in the sun on this plate here with Pentecost and the moon is, is under her feet. And now you got the moon still under her feet. She's clothed in the sun, but she's being harassed by the mystery of iniquity and she's moving. And that Yahweh used the persecution to make people go forth. When they go forth, they're talking about Yahshua the Messiah. So it's all good. So persecution, it says blood, the blood of Deacon Stephen was shed when he was stoned for testifying of Yahshua. And if you ever, that's a very exciting chapter, Acts the seven chapter. Okay, <clears throat> then the water, Deacon Philip baptized the Ethiopian eunuch in water as he requested, you know. And then the Holy Spirit was with those who fled persecution, preaching the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. And sometimes people will see these, the, the two men walking with Yahshua, but this, this should be more people. This chart wasn't finished, there should be more people and they should be running out of town. I think they should have little things of, you know, smoke coming out of their feet because they were they were leaving. And and while they were leaving, they were dispersing the gospel. And it's the same thing that there are like dandelions. And I'm talking about just things being dispersed. That when you blow on those dandelions, you're sending um, seeds out. You're, you're you're dispersing the seeds. And there, see that they were showing that there is a there's a plant that just like explodes and it shoots forth its seeds. So when they're going forth, they're not just going on a trip, they're going forth and they're talking about Yahshua, what happened in Jerusalem and all different kinds of things. Okay, and then persecution 40, the gospel was preached in one, Jerusalem, two, Judea, three, Samaria, and four, the outermost parts of the world. So that's how you get the, the 40. One, Jerusalem, two, Judea, three, Samaria, and four, the outer mouse parts of the world. And also that this is pointing to, um, they're operating in the, the fourth age or the present kingdom age. So across that whole thing, you can have the 40 being represented by the fourth age or the present kingdom age. Anybody else have anything to say? You want to talk about whether this is upward or downward? Did you see what the um, brother Allen put in the chat there? I'm not um, reading no chat, so if somebody has something to say, please just say it. No, he was just telling me that was a direct message how 
it was pointing when I mentioned the soul, how it's going through its migration. He just put it in the chat. I thought that was good because he just uh, finished what I needed to say. Okay. So you want to talk about upward or downward? No, I'm finished. Okay, so then the next one is the Gentile conversion. Mm -hmm. So the, the it was poured out to the Jews, salvation of the Jews, and then it was then it was given to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. And it talks about blood. Okay, the blood of the apostle James was shed by Herod's sword. Water. The apostle Peter called for water to baptize Cornelius's household you know because any can any man forbid water and then it says the spirit the gentiles received the holy spirit by grace through faith without works and that's that's the, the wonderful part that they didn't have to go d doing the works of the law they received it by faith in yashua and you can even see that cornelius he was that that um roman soldier who saw the ways of Yahweh interacted with Yahshua when Yahshua was in the flesh and you know asked him, can you heal my servant? And Yahshua said, I'll come with you. Oh, you don't have to come because I'm a leader. And when I say to my men, go, go, they go. And when I say come, they come. So I know that if you just say the word, this will be accomplished. And Yahshua mentioned, I haven't seen all that faith in Israel, just pointing to the fact that this new covenant was going to be brought in by faith, not by works. That's beautiful. I love that. Anybody else have anything to say about that? That is beautiful. Uh, good morning, Dr. Allen. I have a question. On my chart, I see red above the heads of, it looks like Peter and all the congregation. I also noticed that it's also on the day of Pentecost. Now, would that be a correlation to the blood being on their heads and Peter brought that over and, and brought that word of Yahshua also? Okay, wait a minute. What are you talking about? On the, the grafting of the Gentiles. On my chart, I have Gentile a Gentile conversion right here? Yes, gen, yes, right in the middle. Okay. To the right, right there. Yeah, exactly. And you see Peter is in the middle? Right. He's on my, on my he's chart. Peter's right in the center. Yeah, right here, right? Okay, right. Accessory. On my chart, I have read above the heads of all the congregation. As back on the other chart on the day of Pentecost, there is red above and it's written in sanctuary. Would that be the blood on their heads? No, that's the, fire. Uh, fire. Fire. I'm sorry. Fire. Okay. The, I'm sorry. The spirit of the for the spirit. Okay, the spirit was brought over on the day right. of Pentecost and then he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with right. fire. Yes. Right. Okay. I'm sorry. My the chart is very small. Not a problem. Not a problem, Doc. You don't have to be sorry. That's a good We're in school. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's a, a good question because some of the charts don't don't have that showing at all. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think they do have. Exactly. Oh, you thought that was blood? That's yeah, I thought it was the right. blood. I'm sorry. My chart no. is very small. No, 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 no. No, it's it's like maybe I can make it's the a, fire of the spirit of Yahshua. The I see it now. Yeah, yeah, being baptized with the Holy Spirit. The, with, with the fire. Holy Spirit. Thank you so much. Right. Yeah, it's not even there. No, there's not. That's that's not even on this particular chart at all. What this one? Yeah, there's no. Oh, oh yeah, you can see the little tongue, uh, little flames of fire above. Yeah, but their you head. you might think it was blood. That's true. Oh, you think? Thank you for answering that question. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to think. Where else? With Ezekiel, with Noah. Yes, see, there was blood on their heads. I don't think they have anything. Right, but on, on the other side, they do have it. Yeah. There are blood. There's blood on their heads. If you look closely, you can see blood on their heads in the in the in the chart. If you look yeah, closely on mm -hmm. yes. If you look closely, you can see blood. There's a dot of blood on each one head yeah, Look, I, if you're coming up blow it up a little more you can see it yes yeah. i think on the older charts it's hard to see 
Yes. Yeah, I, don't, I don't see they it. Have it. Just, but what it is here is fire. Right. It's fire for the holy. Uh, the, yeah. But what back there with Noah, it was blood. Right. Thank you. Yeah, their responsibility. Okay, so the next one. Anybody, any questions about here? You want to talk about what's going up or going down? Yeah. Um, yes. Um, uh, Dr. Allen. Everything has you... been opened up. Go ahead. Hello? Dr. Lewis, you're, you're muted. Dr. Lewis, were you going to speak? I thought it was Dr. Burris, Dr. Robinson. It wasn't. No, I, thought, I thought it was. I thought that was Dr. Oh, maybe. Was no, it, Dr. it was not me. It was not me. No, okay, that, was I, Civ, I, that was Civil Lewis. I right. Think I thought that was. Her, yeah, Dr. Yeah, I Lewis. think she lost her connection. Okay. Well, she can always come. Okay. Well, I'd like to point out, since we're still there, is, uh, Lenore, can you bring that down a little bit? Is that uh, the holy place on each one of these charts with the angels flying around? It's, it's an upward uh upward plate, except for the next one that you're going to come to, the apostate. But on the graft in of the Gentiles and the assembly, and I can't see what I don't remember, but they're upward plates. Yeah, it shows the grafting in of the Gentiles, and it shows them receiving that this is supposed to be the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. They have fire on their heads, mm -hmm. and they could, they could understand. And that's when Peter mistakenly thought, "Oh, you got it. You guys need water." But right. then you see in the next chapter, it's like, "Nope, it's not water that's necessary. The words that I speak, they are spirit. They are life. So they're listening to the gospel, and they're being grafted in by faith." Would you raise that, that chart just a little bit more, Dr. Allen? No, no, uh, down. I'm sorry. Just, yeah. I'm I you know, I'm what I'm looking at, I'm also looking at this uh arrow going through the hearts. Do you notice that? Yeah. Yeah, because it was after the Gentiles were were uh grafted in. You see that that's also a persecution there. Yeah. And and notice on the on the plate that is right next to it, see that you have an upward. Uh, you see you see how the arrow is going up, it's pointing up. Yeah, this this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see the arrow. See the head of the arrow. Yes. Pointing up. Yes. Okay, I, I was just making reference to that because I noticed that you had the you, because you had persecution that was still going on. Yep. So the plate next to it, like Dr. Burr said, that's an upward plate. Mm -hmm. Because you see the arrow, the blood yes. and the water, there's an arrow going through it. They and the head, yeah, and the head is on the arrow. Yes. Okay, and so it's going up to the Gentiles. You see, it says baptism of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. in the house of Cornelius. Yes. Okay. And so, yes, you're correct, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Robinson. It's going up. That's going up. Mm -hmm. They were grafted in by faith. And so then in of the, the next one, shift. it was apostasy. And it shows the blood is the blood of martyrs, false, false witnesses, transubstantiating wine into the body of Yahshua. So they, they tell they take some wine and some bread and tell you that this is the, the blood, the body and the blood of, of uh, Jesus Christ or Yahshua. The water is water baptism and a flood of other cardinal ordinances 
were restored as false worship. So water baptism and flood of other carnal ordinances, that's the water. And the spirit, the satanic spirit deceives the world with false doctrines and carnal minded worship. So even though um, this, this gospel has been poured out and it has been shared throughout the world, people prefer doing what they're doing. Even um, they used to talk about in Catholicism, one of the things that I saw as a child that it used to last, the mass used to be all in Latin. Then over the years it changed so that it became to the language of the people. And now some parts of the church are saying, well, they want the Latin mass back. They felt that it was more, I don't know, spiritual. They felt more, they felt more, co co they felt more co connected to what was going on. And for the most part, myself, and other people, we didn't know what they were saying. They were just talking, Donus Viviscum, Ecum Spiritu 220. We didn't know what they were saying. Taking you back to darkness. Mm -hmm. Death. And they, and they think there's something, you know, wonderful about that. And it reminds me of, they're finding out this, this new money that they have. What is it called? Crypt they're, they're Crypto. Finding out they, Crypto. That there's nothing, it's not backed by anything. You know, so it, it's losing its value and everything. And at least like when you have something in a bank, you, you have a bit kind or something. It's, it's, it's back. It's backed by something. It's, it's, these coins aren't backed for anything and people are losing their money. Mm -hmm. so this, and they're also suing some people who uh, advise them to uh, uh, invest in it as well. Yes. Yeah, so, yep. And somebody, yeah, a couple of other people are being uh, sued. A lot of these high performance, they lost business. Yeah, they lost, they lost a lot of money. And, and the point is like, there's no value in, in that. It's not backed by anything. And when they have you doing, eating physical bread, um, getting into physical water to be baptized. It's not backed by anything. It's not the truth. Yahshua doesn't stand behind it. Under the law, you could do physical works to be straight with your creator. Now it's not about physical works. And so they've got you fooled. And so, the, and then the, the 40, the four main religions departed from the truth are the Catholics, Protestants, Jews and then other and other religions. So that's where they're picking up the 40 and the Muslims also would be part of that. So so people are being lied to. Uh, but you know, and the, but it's also a turning their back on the truth because every year you'll have a conversation with someone and you say, well, you know, Yahshua or he wasn't born um December 25th. Oh yes, I know. I know. It's like, so people know, but they don't care. So and then this chart is showing a Yahshua. He is he's the straight line. He's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. And all of these are pointing about being in heaven now, knowing the truth. So there's a lot here. Does anybody else have anything else to say? Yes. I just want to say, can you hear me? Yes. I, also, that that Latin that we're talking about that um, Catholicism used. Um, with the Kyrie eleison, meaning Lord have mercy. Um, they, uh, it's, it's also a dead language. Right. And it's not being used anymore. So that shows how the people want to go back onto death. Well, they are dead. I yeah. mean, the souls, because they don't know Yahshua. Yeah, it's a dead language. That's for sure. Dead language. Thank you. Yes, Lenore, I, I would like to, um, I see a, the principle of uh, the upward and the downward uh, principles when you go to the resurrection of Yahshua, the, uh, the bottom plates, and mm -hmm. then like you say, he resurrect, uh, like that would be an up, and then you go to Pentecost, that would be like a down, mm -hmm. and then uh, the persecution would be like a up. Yep. And then when you get to the Gentiles coming in, see, uh, like Paul, uh, Peter was the one that was sitting up in the upper room, mm -hmm. and see, and then he delivered uh, the the truth to the Gentiles. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And right. then, then the next place you got the up, which is showing Yahshua right. the way, the truth, and the life. And then you see this other praying principle, uh, the re- 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 revelation from Yahshua from heaven. So you got up, and then I'm saying is, then he'll be revealed, and you can see in the principle that the one that have received him will go and uh, have eternal life, and the ones that didn't, uh, eternal damnation. So I can see that principle of up and a down. So like you said, he's the way, the truth, and the life. When we receive him in our heart and in our mind, then we are those angels that's going to appear to consume or burn up this world. So uh, it's, it's, it's a downward uh, in the principles of, of uh, uh, the world. We'll know who's going to be uh, saved. And we are going to know what you know, I'm seeing is uh, what, our, uh, what we got coming to us. So, but we have to be lifted in the spirit. Uh, that's why I said he's the way, to, uh, the way, the truth, and the light. So, so we'll get caught up with him. And that's what we've been. We've been translated into his kingdom. And um, when you say uh, the last shot would show that, you no, know, we're going to appear, when Yahshua appear, we're going to appear with him. So I can see that principle of an up and a down. I just thought that was a comment. Yeah, I gave you to say thank you. Uh, Dr. Grayson, uh, did you say uh, that the angels would be uh, yeah, come on, con- contributing to the burning? Uh, yes, the yes, earth? right. That's what he's making us out of. He's making us uh, uh, okay. angels. Yeah, and that's what's the fire. That's what's uh, that's going to be revealed. What's in us, and that's our understanding and knowledge of Yahweh. That's we will be made part of that fire with Him. That's why I said fire don't burn fire, and you have to. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, now I understand what but you you're mean. talking about. The ministering spirits are as fire. Right. Yeah, that's a principle. Sure is. But uh, he said we'll be one with Him. See, when he's revealed. That's why Dr. Kennedy said when he appears, he ain't going to appear without him. So uh, the instantaneous revelation. So mm-hmm. you can see that by us receiving that knowledge, that's what he's going to give us an immortal body like unto his uh, immortal body. And that's what's going to be revealed to the world. It's what we are, uh, the spirit that he's formed in us. Well, I asked the question because I, uh, believe that uh, we'll be uh, with him in the the resurrection, but I didn't really know that we were considered part of the fire. So can we get Hebrews 1, 7? Can we get Hebrews 1, 7 through 14? And in the, in the meantime, while they're getting that, is that when it was said we'll be wood for the fire and our fire yes. for the wood? Something like that, Leon. Remember that? Yes. Class? Right. No, I don't. But I just looked it up. Hebrews 1, 7 through 14. Hebrews 1, 7 through 14. And of the angels he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son, he saith, thy throne, O Yahweh, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, Yahweh, even thy Elohim, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Yahweh, in the beginning, has laid the foundation of the earth in the heavens, are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old, and doth as doth a garment, and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. But to which of the angels saith he at any time, sit on my right hand, till I make thy enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Okay, so where's the part about the fire? Okay. Okay, yes, seven. 
and of his angels, he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. Yes. And, and it also says, Psalms 104 and four, I'm just looking up Psalms, oh man. Psalms 104 and four, who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers a flaming fire. Yeah, on the day of Pentecost, they spoke with clothes and tongues of fire, remember? Say that again, please. I said uh, on the day of Pentecost, they spoke with clothes and tongues of fire. Yeah, that's what we were seeing on the chart. It says they spoke in tongues as Yahweh gave them utterance. No, the, the, the fire on their head that they're like. Right. That's why I said when that fire rested on them, <clears throat> they said they spoke in tongues as they were. Uh, go back there uh, and read the uh, Acts, the second chapter. It, it tells you exactly. Okay, Acts. Uh, let me see. Acts. And with, it chapter. starts right at one. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Yes. Yeah, that's what I was referring to back there. And you can yeah. see that when you speak the truth, it does, uh, it, yeah. does have a, it does burn you. Of course it does. If you're not safe, sure. Yeah, it burns you. It burns you. And it, there's a part in the book that talks about that. Talks about that they were, oh. Oh, that they were uh, let me see, pierced. I gotta find it. Let me see. Okay. Okay, I can't find it. I'm gonna have to think about it and get back to you. Okay, the other thing that we're looking at with this chart. Where is this chart? No, that's not it. We have we have six minutes, Dr. Uh, Allen. Okay, so we got we just gotta get eschatology. Eschatology. And what does eschatology mean? The end, I think. It says the branch of theology yeah. that is concerned with the end, end of the time. world or of humankind. And it says too, a belief or doctrine concerning the ultimate of final things such as death, the destiny of humanity, the second coming or the last judgment. And does anybody have a, does anybody have their textbook? Is eschatology in the, um, no. it's not in the textbook? It's in the glossary of the textbook. I just don't have the textbook handy, but I believe it's in the glossary. Let's see. Does what are you after? Eschatology in the textbook in the glossary. I'll look it up. Thank you. I have it. Uh, it's on page 122. Eschatology, the last things such as death, judgment, immortality, the doctrine concerning these, and that's what it say. Okay, so it's the last days. So they say, for blood, it says, the sun turned to darkness and the moon to blood before that great and terrible day of Yahweh. Water, water as a lake of fire prepared for Satan and demons 
earth and works burned up or consumed. Water as the lake of fire. Okay, so it's a lake of water. Spirit, spiritual bodies at the resurrection to eternal life in Yahshua or to damnation in the lake. So there's a resurrection unto eternal life or resurrection unto damnation. Correct. And four, 40, four reapers gather souls of destruction or for glory from the four corners of the earth. So that's the word, the word of the spirit, that this creation is going to come to an end. And so, so they have, they have the sun and the moon in the, in the lake. And they have the lake of the fire here. And then they have brethren ascending. And then you also going to have brethren in the lake. Or, or those who wouldn't listen. And so the last one, anybody, anybody got any, any questions or thoughts about this one? Revelation six seventeen. Revelation six seventeen. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? I guess the only one that could stand to his sons. <clears throat> Okay, and then it says Sanctum of Sanctoriums. Okay, let me, just, let me see, what does Sanctum mean? Okay. Okay. I feel... Sanctum, a sacred place, especially a shrine within a temple or a church. Okay. It's a holy place. And sanctorium. Okay, sanctorium. Sanctorium. Okay. Okay. Okay, it says. A holy place, a temple, a shrine, an altar. Showing the holiest of holies. Okay, holiest of holies. Okay, so it just says here, for Omega, Sanctum of Sanctoriums, holiest of holies, the blood, water, and spirit return back unto Yahweh in Yahshua with the witnesses in him. So that's what they have. That's what they have for. It's so all back into the body of Yahshua the Messiah. And I guess this must be from Revelation, the seven, seven churches. Back in Revelation. Usually shown with seven stars. Stars, yes. Yeah. Showing the seven assemblies. Yeah, I'm circling them right here. Yeah. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's ten o'clock, Doctor uh, Allen. Boy, we sure did have fun. <laughs> okay, so you want to do the moderation? I yes, mean, I mean, you mean the uh, doctor? Yeah. yeah. Um, before we close, uh. I would like to remind everyone that our next class will resume Tuesday, November 29th. 
And thank you for remaining muted. So please continue to remain muted until the end of the doxology. We thank everyone that came out to study with us today. We hold classes Tuesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 12 p.m. to 2 a.m. in Malaysia, and 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. in England. Once again, our next class will resume Tuesday, November 29th. May we all stand in our hearts and minds for the doxology taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all times and now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. 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 H